Let me go ahead and start it right now. You are a little bit different. This isn't Dr. Death. Nope, not Dr. Death. Oh, well, who are you, real quick? Well, I am Dr. Freeman, 1337, PhD. Ah, okay, okay. Well, you, you are, uh, yeah, you're a wonderful developer as well. You know, we can... We can talk about the boomer, but that's that's not that's not the point of today. Yeah, oh. no. Today we're talking about some other cool stuff. Well, wonderful. But we before we start with all the wonderful cool stuff, we can start with again. I love saying this. Our number one channel sponsor, uh, Aho Patchworks. You can go right now to AhoPatchworks.com. It uh, should be a link in the description. It's beautiful because it's a patch company. I can actually put links on it without getting in trouble. And use coupon code slash AG casted. I'm not just saying this because I get paid for it, but you know, it's a wonderful patch company. Great patches. I have at least like 20 of them that I bought on my own. If you guys want wonderful apparel, stickers, you know, fun other things like flasks, go to ahopatchworks.com right now and be sure to buy something and use that coupon code, okay? It's a wonderful site. I love them. And you should too. Let's. How many betas we got today or this week or this month? I guess. So we got three to talk about. All right. Which one you want to go with first? Eh, let's talk about the DB Firearms one, the ch the Check Nine. Okay. Yeah, DB is doing a lot of things recently. So yeah, he's done the he finished the Alloy, and then this is a uh, Tech Nine. Is this a Tac Daddy remix or is it its own thing? No, no. This is its own thing. The Tac Daddy is, is sort of an evolution from the Tech Nine. Uh, this one actually just uses Tech Nine parts, so um, you know, parts from the AB19, DC9, or the original Tech Nine will fit. Uh, but you know, just explaining the name a little bit. So that comes from the the check part comes from it taking CZ Scorpion mags and CZ Shadow grip panels. So it's the Tech Nine checkified. You know, I'm looking at the pictures of it. Thank God we're starting to do this now. Um, yeah. Okay. I see. You know, I think there's a Brazilian developer that'd be very happy to see this. Although, you know, the one... Th I mean, it does look actually really cool. I do like the CZ mags and things. However, like, with the few exceptions, there are a few guns where, you know, the Extendo Glock mag probably wouldn't change too much of how the gun normally looked anyways. And the Tech 9 is one of them. Because the Tech 9, if I remember correctly, comes originally with just a stick mag, right? Yeah, no, it's just a regular old stick mag of some kind. Right, yeah, so it's not that different aesthetically, but that being said, I do kind of like, I do like more different mags, I guess yeah, just different mags being used. It's, so is it only going to be just CZ mags then? Uh, yeah, from what I'm seeing, it's just going to take those CZ mags. Okay, now I'm trying to remember, so, okay, yeah, I don't know enough about Tech 9, so Tech 9 stuff was a little bit before my time of, that was like right around when the original Mac Daddy became pretty big. A lot of the Tech Nine stuff was also starting up. Are you around in that time too? Yeah, vaguely. Uh, I I wasn't following it too closely, but I think I was around at that point. Well, yeah, because like it was mostly Tech Nines and Mac Daddies were kind of or Mac Part Kits were pretty big. And yeah, I remember if you were able to pick up some of the police buyback ones, they were like pretty cheap, but. You know, shocker with a lot of those police buyback ones. Once, yeah, the once the surplus went away, they kind of stayed away. Yeah, I mean that was a thing. It'd be, it'd be nice if people started making more Tech Nine or uh, yeah, Tech Nine parts, but um, or Tech Nine parts, I should say. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to be you know, see you know what some parts makers in the community think, yeah, you know, down the road. Because I, I think we're still sort of exploring our fetish. Uh, with the uh, Mac parts uh, at the moment, between Mac 11 and some other stuff that may or may not be in the works. Well, that's kind of where the TAC-9... So, okay, so if I'm trying to remember this correctly, so you, you said the parts kits again, so I'm guessing the one that MAF sells, the, the TAC-9 one, is that the same as... Oh, well, yeah, that, that that that's the TAC-9, yeah, that's for the TAC-Daddy. But, but that's sort of an evolution based on uh, the TAC-9, uh, at least that was Sol Invictus's, you know, so trying to improve upon the Tech Nine, from what I understand. But if I'm trying to remember correctly, that would be that one's different enough where it won't work with the original Tech Nine stuff, right? 
Exactly. The TAC-9 you know, parts won't fit on this. Uh, yeah, uh, so the only ones that are going to work with this one are original TAC-9 parts, AB-19 parts, and the DC-9 parts. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the TAC-9 you know, parts will not fit. That's kind of a shame, because, yeah, I think the TAC-9 is the only one that I'm seeing parts gets for now. Well, like, if you have a TAC-9... Sure, it can be remixed. Well, right. Yeah, hopefully. But, you know, Tech 9s kind of like the original, like, top, you know, charging Max. Those are kind of a lot harder to find now, if anything. I guess, you know, there's really not much else to add to that. I mean, yeah, it looks, I guess it's kind of different. It's different from the original Tech, or, oh, what was the original Tech 9 printed gun? Uh, God, I forget. It was something by FMDA made it, I think. Shocker, yeah, that's, that's that's kind of a safe bet, I would say. But I think it was was it the ghetto? Was it just called a ghetto blaster? Oh, the ghetto blaster was by FMDA, and then Booligan did something with it, as Booligan does. Mm. Okay, yeah, because I yeah, that's I, I'm guessing this is sort of its own little thing. But yeah, either way, it, it's something that's not a Mac and something that's not a Glock, so it's definitely something nice. And I do like the fact that it's using Scorpion mags. It does look pretty cool, but. Yeah, I guess. I don't really know what else to add to that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it'll be nice, because yeah, I think we should be using the, the CZ mags a little bit more often. I mean, the problem is a lot of stuff doesn't fit the double stack for a 9mm versus single stack you know, without some modifications that make it not work with other things backward compatible. Like, you know, you can sort of make CZ mags work in a Mac 11, but you'd have to modify the mag, and if you want something with an OEM mag, that becomes a problem. So... Uh, I mean, designing things that you know, will fit those more slightly more reliable double stack mags. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to see more of that. I mean, I've seen a bunch of them you know made at this point. They're trying to get to at least a thousand rounds cumulatively, you know, worth of testing. So I think that's uh, that's a good goal. Um, yeah, you know, just because you know we don't really have hard and fast round counts, uh, but you know, basically, you know, it's like, have you tried to? Yeah, you know, to beat the piss out of whatever it is that you want to uh, want to release for other people to use. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's a, a that's a good goal for a, a project like that. I think. I think that's a reasonable goal, and I'm pretty sure if it handles a thousand rounds without any sort of breakage or anything, it's probably fine. But you know, that's my own humble opinion. You're the developer; you can add to that if you wanted to. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's. I don't know. There's there's different degrees of exploding. The, I think the worst thing would be like if you had an out of battery that was really out of battery and it's a rifle cartridge, that would be worse. Hopefully, I don't know much about the Tech 9. I bet maybe it's a little bit different. The Macs were always notorious for just being cheap anyways. They were never known for being the best quality guns to begin with. Yeah, I mean, they were basically, you know, like you could put them together in your garage if you really wanted to. Yeah, I, I'm guessing the tube is a little bit harder to do with like a cnc machine i don't know and maybe it's full uh, i don't know well either way we, we probably spent too much time on this to begin with let's go on to the next one what do we have next yeah so the next one we're going to talk about is uh you know uber clays he has the geister pistol Ooh, okay what is the geister pistol? so this one is well it's a pistol but um <laughs> okay. so uh this one takes styre m40 kits It'll also take kits to an M9, though. So, uh, you know, these kits are very rare, but apparently when uh, Uber Clay reached out to a bunch of people, he found that, you know, there were many more people with kits than he thought. So he decided to go and do a beta for it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, kind of rare parts, but they do come up on Gunbroker every once in a while. Uh, it is a good one for printed frames because it has an FCU. It's basically just one piece with rails, so... You know, it's more like printing a grip unit and having it drop in. So it's almost like a certain, you know, five-letter agency decided that, you know, the wrong part was the receiver. You know, because you can just, just sort of print something that amounts to almost a grip unit, drop the fire control unit in, and, you know, away you go. But, you know, they are a little bit scarce. Um, I will say, though, that said, I remember a time when the high-power parts kits were a bit scarce, too. I think... At the moment that you know those that are in charge of busting up uh, you know guns for parts, uh, you know with gunbusters and other operations, I think the moment that they saw there was a 3D printed high power, you know suddenly you know there was more high powers on the market. So you know sometimes it's almost to build them and they will come because you know you have no idea you know how you know how many guns are made you know approximately from certain manufacturers, but it's hard to say how many crime guns get cut up and put into that sort of 
you know, uh, I'll, I'll call it, for lack of a better word, the plastic pipeline. Uh, you know, guns that get cut up, put into parts kits, and then are recovered, and then you know, built into firearms once more. So, uh, I hope I don't give anyone a term that is then you know, taken by the, you know, whatever stream media. But um, you know, that that pipeline sort of changes based on you know people who are listening and what they see is available. So, you know, hopefully more people, you know, if there's you know more of those crime guns out there and they just haven't been marketing the parts kits, then you know, hopefully more of them come out of the woodwork. I know they certainly did with some of the Taurus parts kit stuff that I did. So. Yeah, we'll see. I think it looks like a cool build, and, you know, good potential for a printed uh, you know, frame for it anyway. Well, you know, so let me try to get this right. If I remember correctly, this Steyr, is it, is it actually the Steyr M9? Yeah, there's a Steyr M9, not the Beretta M9. Right. No, but Still patiently I, awaiting that one. But. but if I remember correctly, isn't this also another rotating, like, yeah, like a rotating barrel Almost like the PX Storm. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is. There is a Steyr handgun that is a rotating barrel, like a PX Storm. This one is apparently not that one. Um, this one. Oh, okay. Oh, this is that one with the weird sighting system. Oh God, it's like every like supposed futuristic game has it, where it's like a triangle, like chevron type of shit. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. This is this is a completely different type of. Pistol. Yes. Yes, I don't know. Chevrons are kind of gross. If I want a Chevron, I'll go buy an ACUG. Yeah, I mean the ACIS or was ACC or ACSS, whatever the one primary arms is. It's a decent like reticle, except I just have discovered I just don't like Chevrons like at all. <laughs> like I, I get it. It's sort of this. Uh, yeah. It's an infinitely like like it's always going to be more accurate in that regard of like it's always you know going to be like less than one MOA or whatever you want to say it is. But I just. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, here's the way I feel about chevrons, though, is that, you know, like, you know, primary arms is cool and all. You know, I have a buddy of mine who has, you know, used one of their, you know, their chevron-style scope thingies. Uh, but, you know, like, if you're going to pay, you know, as much as you're going to pay for primary arms, you know, that shit comes from China anyway. You might as well just go get a six-hour, you know, a six-hour uh, LPVO or something. You're going to get better glass. You can use it if you run out of battery, and yeah, frankly, like you know, they're bigger, but you know, the, and weigh a little more. But those are really the only you know downsides I can think of. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm just looking at this this gun. It is the Steyr M9 again. Um, it it's not a Glock, so that's obviously something nice going for it. But it is a striker fired handgun. Yeah, from what I understand. Now I have no idea what reset action trigger means. Uh, uh, I don't know. Sounds uh, like fancy marketing. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. Um, uh, like, yeah, I'm looking at the way. I mean, it looks like a very nice handgun. I have nothing. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it. It also seems like it's really easy to take down, like compared to a Glock, which it's not that hard to begin with. But it seems like it's almost like the Sig way doing it, which you know that's not bad. Um, well, I don't know, unless you're, like, a cop in, like, what, New Hampshire or Vermont or some shit? Well, it, I mean, it seems like, you know, if, depending on how, like, you know, how autistic you are about things, it apparently has, like, a nice low bore axis and things like that, so that's, you know, that's wonderful. Um, I'm wondering on the trigger is, because if it's anything like, have you ever shot, like, a Walther or even a Canic? Yeah, no, I, you know, I'm still working on a Canic TP9 frame, and I kind of like those. And I've uh, well, they, shot the Walter once or once or twice. Well, they've cloned a Walter PP or PP nine or P ninety nine. I I forget the yeah, one. Yeah, P ninety nine. Yeah. I yeah, got yeah. I got to shoot one of those, and those triggers are one. They are just the best striker fired trigger you're going to get. And Canik did a very very good job copying it, like a really good job copying it to where, yeah, it's hard to justify the Walter price for it. If it's anything like that, then I bet it's really, really nice to shoot. I think that's a pretension, you know, striker, but that's not what I'm seeing online. It, yeah, it's something different. That's what I'm getting. I guess this is kind of the nice thing about it. Of this is just a different handgun, and I, I like handguns. They're more interesting to me. But this is different than a Glock. Um, yeah, different than a Sig. Different than a Shield. It's you know something fun and interesting, I guess. I 
I'm curious to know more about its mechanism and how it kind of works. But if it's striker fired, you know, striker fires are, you know, people know striker fires pretty well. The magazines. Oh, they do. The magazines, I'm curious on, you know, how those are, how are the availability on them? Styre, probably not great or it's expensive. I just don't know. I mean, probably, you know, 75% chance Mechgar makes them. So the mags are probably, you know, 30, 40 bucks a pop if I have to take a guess. Yeah, no, it seems like an interesting handgun. I am kind of curious on how it is and, you know, how people like it, but to each their own, I don't really know. I I, I just don't know enough about the handgun. I'm curious about it, but it seems kind of just like a typical striker-fired handgun. Although, I guess, you know, if you really wanted to be you know even more special about it, it seems like, just in general, these guns are about, like, $570. Yeah, now I'm looking right now. You can pick uh, this up for like 500 bucks, just like the completed handgun. So if you want to just sort of try it out, you know, it depends. If you like it, you can try this out. It's Glockish in price. I don't know. Like, I don't know Steyr that well, though. Neither do I. I mean, I do know Steyr's done some cool things. I know they had their own little fun rotating barrel handgun, which that's the one that kind of intrigues me a bit. This one sort of seems like them, you know, bending to the consumer of going for a striker fired handgun which you know is all the rage nowadays i uh, hammer hammer fired for life i love me a hammer fired i love i love my jericho hell i've shot a cz p01 or cz 75 p01 those are legitimately some of my favorite guns i totally would get one for carry but yeah no. well sonny sonny that jericho didn't win two world wars I that is not a double action, that is a single action. I prefer me a double action. But Oh, so you prefer those Nazi handguns like the Berettas. I prefer my guns Jewish. But that is irrelevant. I will say I wish I knew more about this one because I have not I have not hailed Steyr at all. I mean the only thing I really know about Steyr is Aug. Well, but... I guess yeah, no, if you have a parts kit laying around, this is not a bad one. But yeah, no, I I wish I could have more to say about this. Probably you too, but uh, I just don't know enough about Styres. Yeah, and, not me neither, but it's a cool project. I mean, no, yeah, I, I like it. You know, again, the more projects, the better. And the more we get to learn about different thing or different hangings and different mechanisms, the better. But yeah, I, I just I kind of feel sad. I kind of wish we had more to say about it, but that's kind of it. Yeah. All right. I guess let's go to the next one. What do we got last? So the last one is by. A, develop, a developer I've not heard of before, Crinky Dinky. I talked to him a little bit earlier today, and he seems like a nice enough fella. But this is called the Hand Deployed Pyrotechnic Fuse. Fascinating. Okay, so, go ahead and describe. So a little bit of background, a little background on this. So this was designed, uh, it's designed, the whole concept of this design is a fuse head, uh, because that's uh, the main ATF control component uh, of uh, all the cool hand deployed stuff that you might want to play with, and uh, you know, you'd hate to you know, try developing anything for signaling or other purposes, and you know not be able to get that ATF sort of controlled part. That would usually require licenses or background checks. So this started with that developer wanting to reactivate smoke grenades, like in the video games, and then branch out into 3D printed clones of other exotic hand deployed music munitions uh, that aren't available to the public. Uh, sort of like a triple chaser smoke grenade, nine bangers, you know, stuff like that. So uh, currently, you know, this project is using surplus spoons and strikers and tension springs off of smoker dummy grenades. But uh, we're currently planning on developing one with DIY spoons and strikers and tension springs. You know, probably be pretty easy enough to just make as uh, so, you know, long as you know, they're right, you know. Uh, but uh, essentially, the pin holds the spoon in place. And had just like an original, you know, signaling device for. I don't want to see the say the G word so much, but uh, the spoon holds a striker back in a cock position. Then uh, when you release it, the striker throws off the spoon, it hits a cap gun primer, which then lifts uh, lifts the uh, safety fuse into the um, into the main channel, and then that burns down and lights whatever payload is under it. So, yeah, you know, essentially, it's like a, an open source. Uh, ignition mechanism, you know, for signaling devices, and really the sky's the limit because you could probably take deactivated 
you know, deactivated frags and try to, you know, make those, you know, functional again. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do because, you know, there's tons of, uh, of inert stuff out there on the market, which is mostly made inert by removing that, you know, main firing component and presumably, you know, making the explosive component inert. But, you know, still, you know, like fragmentary, you know, the, you know, part of the fragments, you know, it's not like that's going to be any less good at fragmenting, for example, or like smoke grenade canisters, you know, generally the, those can be reloaded a few times and, you know, civilians can usually get deactivated ones. So you know, there's a lot of potential in there to you know, be able to make some cool, you know, hand delivered pyrotechnics. Well, you know, my main view of this is I think, Personally, I like the idea of smoke grenades more. I mean, I'm pretty sure smoke, you know, like smoking, div- like smoke bombs and stuff, those are legal to own, right? Because, you know, kids use those. Like, they're just, you know... I mean, yeah, I mean, there's variants that are civilian legal and some that aren't. Well, right, but, you know, for me, I always found, you know, the, the ideal thing is, look, anyone can make a pipe bomb. Those are not too hard to do. In fact, I'm, well, I won't go too deep into that, but, you know, if you're a smart, aspiring chemist, you could probably figure it out. Um... You know, things like smoke grenades are a little bit harder, at least kind of like going with the canister type of thing. And you know, there is a nice little advantage of not being seen. In fact, it's pretty nice it's not be seen. So I kind of like it like this. I, I'm looking through some of these pictures. I you know, I see what looks like a lot of like 3D printed smoke grenades. Essentially. And now that would be kind of cool if you could repurpose a Coca-Cola can that I see right there. I'm going to show that one because it's awesome. Okay, so, you know, what was else? What else could it do again? Well, basically, you know, it is the ATF regulated component in most of those hand delivered munitions. So, you know, essentially, you know, it works the same way that, you know, any other smoke grenade might work uh, in terms of, you know, how the ignition component is, you know, is oriented. Uh, but with the hand, uh, with this fuse head, basically, you know, it's just that mechanism of like, you know, pulling the pin you know, dropping the spoon, and essentially it'll ignite whatever. So you could use it in smoke grenades, you could use it in lots of different things. Yeah, I mean, my main thought for it is exactly smoke grenades. Actually, believe it or not, if you go and control Pusida, I told them at some point, like, yeah, you know, I mean, because I'm a chemist, and my thought was, you know, I could probably make a smoke grenade not too hard. Which, I mean, I can make a smoke bomb, but, you know, grenade is a little bit different of, you know, you pull a pin and then you have a fuse and everything. That's a little bit more out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> but... Like, a bomb's not too hard to make. A little, like, smoke bomb where you light a little fuse and, you know, here it goes. So that's actually one of my things I have uh, added to my, you know, my alkylates of what I was wanting to do. I have not even come close to working on the fuse yet to change it. So I, I'm rather interested in this one just because, if anything, this might have a rather useful, you know, a, a pretty big use in things like, you know, airsoft. I think... Mm, yeah. If you're an airsofter, this would be kind of nice to do. Of yeah, I know. I've seen them go off. They they just don't seem as powerful as the, you know the you know the mil spec stuff. I think this might have a bigger use for people that are airsofters, which you know no fault in that. I'm not going to shit on people for being an airsofter, because honestly, let's be a hundred percent realistic about things. If you're an airsofter, you're probably training or you're probably larping more than most people with guns do. I think this mm-hmm. would probably be a rather useful tool to get, especially with looking how expensive some of these smoke grenades are. Yeah, some of these airsoft smoke grenades, you're looking at 40 bucks, 16 bucks, $17, $20, yeah, $40. This is kind of nice. You can make your own smoke grenade and you know, you can chances are you'll probably use it more than most people and you know, why you and Airsoft will be using this is completely up to you. I, but I, I think this, I think this is a rather interesting thing because you know this also brings another topic that I kind of like. Not everything that you know the catalog makes needs to be a firearm. No, no, it doesn't always have to be a firearm. Like you know, I know I've made plenty of accessories, but you know, st- you know stuff like this where you're sort of branching into you know destructive devices, you know, or potentially destructive devices. You know, I think just people gotta you know be uh, be careful and understand you know what it is they're tr- they're actually sort of getting themselves into. You know, just because you know not everyone uses you know very high levels of you know opsec. You know, when it comes to doing things on the internet or posting their felonies online. So you know, like you know, if you want to be a Chad and based in whatever, 
you know, I just hope, you know, that anyone who's trying to do stuff without the proper, you know, licensure and or tax stamps, you know, just, you know, for the love of God, don't use your real name on the Internet. Don't put your put your picture next to your felonies. It just be careful. I mean, that could be a whole other stream in and of itself talking about OPSEC, but well, you know, my main thing Just be careful. Well, my main thing is this. If some people just want to be able to make things but like, you know, things like speed loaders that get stuff, people that are not normally interested in 3d printed guns just to try something you know 3d printed of okay well maybe i don't don't trust making a gun yet but you know this speed loader is pretty convenient well what else does this place have huh oh i guess they have some other you know they have some magazines i'll try that out okay well you know now that i've had so much good luck with you know magazines and all these other stuff might try something yeah you know, gun later but you know not everyone will be as comfortable as we are especially probably how many builds we have done yeah we doesn't really scare us or really phase us anymore. It's important to remember not everyone is like us. And things like this, you know, I like the idea of having more airsoft stuff in general. Just because, you know, there are some people in, say, Europe or Ger yeah, Europe, UK, even Eastern Europe, other countries where, you know, guns are extremely regulated. But they want, you know, they still want to be able to 3D print things, but it maybe they're not willing to make an FGC9, but... They want something fun to play with. That gets more people interested, and that sort of just, you know, brings a much larger larger audience than, you know, focusing only on guns. You know, these people will like guns. They, you know, they're interested, you know, they like 3D printing things. Usually most people in Airsoft do like guns. But, you know, maybe they're just not ready to make one yet. Maybe they just want to try something fun at first. Uh, no, I mean, they're, they're multi-use, that's for sure. Right, and I, I like the idea of things, you know, not everything needs to be a firearm. Make the catalog more of a thing where people see as a fun repository of, you know, sure, there's guns there too, but there's also other things. And, you know, I, I think airsofters and, you know, us have rather similar tastes. Gun guys and airsofters have similar tastes in that regard, and consolidating that all into one place would be pretty convenient, I would say, because, again... The FGC9 can also be made literally anywhere, so if you get a large airsoft community that likes guns, they'll also probably be able to figure out how to make the other one if they really are interested. But you know, that's sort of my opinion. You know, bringing people that not normally are gun people into guns is kind of what I you know, find more interesting. I mean, they help get people into the community, but... Um... I, I don't know though. Like you know, accessories or or like a grip is one thing, but like you know, you know, I, I would think that three D printing something that's an igniter for, you know, something that's like a hand held pyrotechnic or something, to me that feels a little bit more advanced. And I would think that you know some people might be a little bit reluctant to do that as for a first print. But you know, I don't know. Maybe some people would you know, think of that as more of a one time use item, or maybe use it a couple times, so it might be you know considered a little safer. It depends. Because, you know, you're not going to be right next to it when it goes off, so... Again, I think a smoke grenade would be rather smart, just because, again, you can now bring in a whole different community that maybe most people in the gun side overlook. And I think that is something that... It's a it's a blind spot, but I'm glad to see, you know, like, things like 3D-printed nods and, you know, helmets and other things are becoming more prevalent. That's... It's sort of bridging that gap. Yeah, no, it does help bridge it a little bit. So, I mean, you know, it's... You know, it's better to have more options than less, as long as it's safe and it works and it's well documented. You know, why not? That's what I agree. You know, with that, I guess, you know, I'll we'll see what happens. You know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how these projects go. I guess I'm looking forward to next month. What about you? What are, what are your final thoughts? Well, I mean, we have a lot of cool stuff coming. I just hope that... You know, we you know keep finding you know more cool shit to make, and we you know keep developing it because you know like you know we have you know a handful of people that have been doing it for you know a while, and you know don't tend to get that burned out. But you know, you know if you want to try your hand at developing something, you know, you know try stop putting it off and just try making it, and you know come to you know me or Doctor Death or you know whoever else, and. You know, the more experienced folks would be happy to help give advice to the people who are, you know, looking for it. So, um, you know, I know that's sort of how I was able to, uh, you know, help you know, recruit some other folks, you know, for, you know, having projects on the catalog. Like, probably the one that, you know, comes to mind, you know, right now is, you know, Ruby. Because you know, I remember, you know, she had the idea for a 3D printed suppressor way back uh, last year. 
you know, showed me some videos and I sort of challenged her to make it a little better, you know, so that it could, because originally it could only do maybe, you know, 50 to 75 rounds. So I challenged her to find ways to improve it and make it more stable. And yeah, she was able to, you know, you know, she was able to develop it into something that lasted, you know, much longer. So, you know, everyone needs a little bit of feedback every now and again to be challenged to try to improve. But, you know, just, you know, one example, I mean, you know, she, isn't around anymore and you know i I know i miss talking to her but um you know this is how you know things can live on too is you know make something and you know leave your mark on on the community because you know even after you're gone your projects are still going to be there in the blockchain so you know it's one way that you can live forever Mm, yeah and i think with that that's a great way to end it Guess we'll see everyone again next month. We'll see if Dr. Death comes back, and who knows? Maybe you might come back too, depending on whatever happens, I guess. But thank you for filling in, by the way. Yeah. It means a lot, and I'm yeah, glad no we problem. Can get it, you can get it this week.